Good morning, we've got experiments to do today. So one of the things you have to do as a chemist is to predict or at least classify what kinds of chemical reactions you have. Today, we are going to look at this thing called decomposition reactions. Is that pointing in the right direction? So, we have this material here called copper carbonate. We're going to add some heat and we're going to break it down into some parts. What do you think it's going to break, out, break down into, guys? Copper You can't break it down into itself. What is it going to break down into? Carbon dioxide, volcanoes. All right, we've got a variety of answers. Let's see what they have. Now, some people said uh, carbon dioxide, and I think that maybe they're right. How can we tell if we're creating carbon dioxide? It's colorless. All right, and that's difficult to tell. We can see bubbles, maybe. So here, we've got in a sealed container. So glass tube, there's a rubber bung, a tube, and that goes into some water here. So I can... I can see if there's bubbles being produced, and that might tell me it might be carbon dioxide. But that could be any gas. I could get oxygen gas. I could get carbon dioxide gas. We don't know which one it is. So to help tell the difference, I filled this one here not with water, but with quicklime or lime water, whatever. Lime water reacts with carbon dioxide, and it makes a precipitate. So if we see this change into a cloudy color, we know it must be carbon dioxide. If not, it might just be the oxygen or something like that. So, let's put it down here in the tripod and see what happens. Heating the copper carbonate. No. Now, why is that? Has this done anything? Can you see anything changes? No, I think, I think, what's, hap I think what's happening is that maybe it's just the air inside is also expanding, so it's pushing out. So when it starts reacting, you'll know. Look at that, look at that. Oh. Now look at the other tube. Bubbles. Well, it's going gangbusters. Yeah. That's oh, wow. That's pretty cool. So what does the test tell us? What's it made out of? Carbon dioxide. All right, so we're creating carbon dioxide gas. That's so cool. Now, before everything goes wrong, I have to unplug it. All right. Well, what, what tends to happen if I don't unplug it is that I've created all this extra hot gas, so it's in expanded state. Then once I remove the Bunsen, everything cools back to room temperature. And what do gases do when they cool down? My shrink. Well, they, they come together. So it actually starts to suck up the liquid through the pipe and then down into here, which is not what I wanted because I need to dispose of this. What this is, has it disappeared entirely or has it changed somehow? It's changed. It's, changed black. Black. it's, like, like a lot it's green, gone from yeah. green to black. We've yeah. created something different. What we've created here is copper oxide. So that's one of our materials. C-U-O, which we presume is this black color there. <laughs> Solid. And the other material that we created is CO2 gas, which is what we detected over here. The lime has reacted. Okay, so while the students are setting up their own experiments, let's talk about decomposition reactions. It's basically decomposing something. So we start off with something relatively complicated, we break it, break it into smaller parts. So to try and predict what you might create out of it, just think about what parts you have. Do you recognize any of the pieces? So maybe I could get some copper metal at the end. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe we can get some carbon something. Carbon, well, I can make carbon dioxide from this. Or I can get some oxygen gas out of this, which is why we're trying to tell the difference using the quick lime. Uh, sorry, the, the, the lime water over here. So this one here will tell us the difference between oxygen gas or carbon dioxide gas, and we've got a positive reading for carbon dioxide. So from that, we know that one of our products has to be CO2. The rest is a probably good, in, uh, uh, yeah, whatever you got left over. So if I've used my carbon, I've used some oxygens, what's left over, I've still got the copper, it's got to be somewhere. It hasn't turned, from what I can observe, it hasn't turned into like a coppery color, like metal, so it hasn't completely, you know, decomposed down its, to its, its, its component elements. So it must be some sort of compound, and usually when you have metals, they're gonna be some sort of oxide. So hence, copper oxide. Good morning, we're going to experiment today. We're going to look at different types of, we just had a sneeze in the back of the room. Try this.